This video describes how to start up, reuse and shut down the Leica DMI-8 wide field microscope. Firstly, remove the dust cover and place on the side. Switch on the power for the flash 4 fluorescence camera at the wall, then turn on the microscope power with the CTR box on the shelf. Next. Turn on the fluorescence LEDs using the switches for the power first, labelled number 1, and then the shutter, labelled number 2. Wait for the microscope to boot and finish carrying out a stage calibration routine, and then log into the PC. Once the LCD screen on the microscope has completed booting, and the stage has finished its calibration, you can proceed to load your sample. Ensure you are starting on a dry objective, in this case a 10x. In order to access the stage and load your sample more easily, tilt the condenser arm back, invert your sample so that the cover slip faces the lens. Adjust the clips to ensure they hold your sample in place. Next, check that the correct port is chosen so that the light is directed to the eyepieces instead of the camera by using the oculus button inside the objectives tab on the microscope LCD screen. Now continue to the contrast tab and select either bright field or fluorescence and open the appropriate shutter. In this case, the transmitted light shutter for bright field illumination. You can adjust the lamp brightness with the controls on the left side of the microscope, then use the focus controls and stage controls to bring your sample into focus. Once this is done, you can switch off the illumination. If you want to visualise using fluorescence, select the fluorescence button within the contrast tab and choose your appropriate filter cube from the selection at the bottom of the screen. A list of these filters is written on the wall opposite the microscope. Open the shutter using the instant light shutter button. Once you are finished, turn off the shutter so you don't bleach your sample. If you want to use an oil or water immersion lens, switch to the Lenses tab and select the lens you require. Currently there is a 20x water immersion lens installed on the system, but there is a 100x oil immersion lens which can be installed in its place. Here we select the 63x oil immersion lens. The lens will automatically lower and the icon will flash, but the lens will not rotate into place. You can now push back the condenser arm, remove your sample and place a small amount of oil on your sample in the region you are visualising. Press the lens button again to rotate the lens into position. This is so you do not accidentally drop oil onto the air objective. Reapply your sample to the stage and return the condenser arm to its upright position. Return to the contrast tab and open the shutter to visualise your sample, remembering to close the shutter once you are done. On the desktop, double click the last X icon. At the splash screen the default selections are fine, so click OK and wait for LASX to load. The LASX window can be scaled using the slider in the top left and each pane adjusted in size. The central pane shows the light path and starts with one channel loaded. Here it is defaulted to the DAPI filter cube and pseudo-coloured it in grayscale using its lookup table or LUT. This can be changed by right clicking on the lookup table and selecting an appropriate colour scale. The channel name can also be renamed 
and you can add to the image metadata by right clicking on the channel, selecting properties and allocating a die to the channel too. Further channels can be added by clicking the plus button. A new channel is created with the same settings as the last one and a default lookup table. Select the filter cube that matches your fluorophore and repeat the setup as before. For each channel, the lamp intensity and exposure can be set independently. Under illumination settings, you only need standard to control intensity using the FAIM, the Fluorescence Intensity Manager. For the camera control, in almost all cases, exposure adjustment is all that is required. Once you have a multi-channel setup that you are happy with, these can be saved in the Load Save settings in the central pane. From here, you can also reload previously saved settings from your profile. Once you have the settings loaded that you need and you have found your focal plane and sample, click Live to find you in the setup. It will show you a live image in the right hand pane that is being taken with the currently highlighted channel, in this case the Dappy Cube. A blue pseudo colour and a black background is difficult to see, plus the dynamic range of the Hammermatic camera is larger than the range of the monitor and your eyes. Clicking the LUT icon on the left of the image swaps the lookup table to a heat range indicator. Using this, it is easier to see the exposure and lamp intensity. Repeat this, moving to the other channels. It will remember you are using the range indicator LUT. As you can see, when I move to the Texas Red channel, there are a lot of blue pixels. These are saturated on the camera and therefore should be avoided, since you don't know what the real intensity is. Since my exposure is already low, I'll reduce the lamp intensity. For the GFP channel, I need to reduce both to get a satisfactory image. Once all channels are set, click Stop to prevent further bleaching. Pressing Start now will capture all the channels at the current focal plane. It has still remembered we are using the range indicator. To swap, click the LUT icon once and it moves to show grayscale for all channels. Press it again and it cycles back to the pseudo colours that you chose. An overlaid image can now be shown by clicking the overlay icon in the right of the image. Double clicking on any image pane will maximise that in the image window. Here I've selected the overlay image. Using the scroll wheel it is easy to zoom in on a part of the image. Here it is obvious the focal plane isn't ideal, so I'll reset this and take the image again. Go live to see if you can fine tune the focus. It will go live on the last selected channel. This particular sample is too thick and isn't ideal for performing single plane imaging on. If desired, swap to a different channel to check the focus. Since this pollen sample is very thick, I'll capture a Z-stack through it so that I have all the data from the pollen grains. Click the Z icon in the top left to activate the Z-stack settings. Going live, I can move the focus so that I am just below the sample, that is, it is just blurred. Click begin in the Z settings pane. Now move back through the sample and just out of focus on the other side, and then click end. Once both are set, they are shown in red. You can see how thick the stack will be and how many sections it will take. By default, it is set to system optimized, using the objective numerical aperture and the wavelengths being acquired to determine the optimal overlap to satisfy Nyquist sampling criteria. It is possible to override these by fixing the number of planes or the step size, but isn't recommended. Pressing start now will capture each channel in Z. The Z planes are shown on the right of the image. If you require highly accurate co-localization, you can force the image to be taken one plane at a time for all channels. The registration is more accurate this way. This is changed in project settings. All images captured are stored in a single Leica image file or LIF file, which can be viewed in the Open Projects tab. LASX is non-destructive and keeps everything apart from the preview images. Opening a previous LIF file, you can select an image and reapply the settings from this image using the Apply button. 
For example, here I've selected the first image, which reloads the channel settings without a set stack. Alternatively, you can save the settings to reuse later. Now we'll look at LASX Navigator, which allows one to capture overview scans and choose fields of tile areas. Click the grid icon to open Navigator. This opens a new window that brings all the settings from LASX across. There is one large pane in the centre. The white square represents the current field of view of the camera. You can access all the settings from LASX using the icons on the left. Using the scroll wheel on the central pane, you can zoom out to show the whole stage area that can potentially be imaged. Dragging with the left mouse button pressed will pan around the stage area. The spiral button at the bottom will perform a fast spiral scan using the selected channels. This will continue for many images or until you press stop. Here the spiral scan has identified a structure at the top. I'll stop the scan and reposition the stage by double clicking on a point before clicking spiral again to find this structure's boundaries. Once I've found the part I wish to image, press stop. Using the rectangle tool from the bottom of the window, I can now draw an area I wish to image. If the sample isn't flat, it is possible to set focus points across the sample, which Navigator will use to build a contour map of the tiled area. Click focus map point at the bottom to add these, then place around the tiled area. Next, click the focus map button. This lists the dropped focus points. You can choose to automatically set all with autofocus. For a sample this thick, that wouldn't work, so I'll move to each position. I just said in live mode and set it manually using the set Z button. Once all are verified, the task list shows the region we have selected. You can verify that the settings are as you want by checking with the image and beam path icons on the left and switch on or off channels as desired at the top. Clicking start will run the tile scan with the chosen channels and or Z settings. It is possible to draw multiple regions and capture multiple tile scans at once. Each will be added to the task list and all those that are ticked will be imaged. The tile scan is not stitched together automatically by default. It can be done using the Mosaic Merge tab in Navigator, or performed offline at a later date in LASX. Clicking Mosaic Merge, select the tile scan and click Merge in the bottom right. Here you can see there is an obvious unevenness across the field due to the lens and the size of the camera chip. We can correct for this using linked shading correction. This is accessible in the beam path tab but is easiest to set in LASX, so quit navigator and click the linked shading icon in the camera settings. This starts a wizard detailing how to perform it. Activate by clicking the tick box and then click the wizard tab, which describes the steps you need to perform. Store your current position using the button, then move to an area of the slide that contains no information and move the Z drive well out of focus. You can do this using the Oculus or in live mode. Here I've gone live, then move the light path to the Oculus on the touchscreen to find an empty field by eye. Next click the acquire tab and the current objective is already selected. Click Single Reference to set shading correction for this lens. Start will ask you to do all lenses and isn't recommended unless you intend to use them. Objectives that LASX already has stored are shown with a green tick. 
Once complete, click the Restore tab and use the button to move back to your original position. Then quit the wizard. Now the shading correction icon is displayed green to show that it is active and valid. Now I'll go back into Navigator. You can see it has remembered everything we did before and I can simply repeat the tile scan as previous, but this time with shading correction. Again we can repeat the mosaic merge and you can see that this time the image looks smoother. The alignment of the tiles isn't perfect though. We can perform a more detailed stitching in Las X. Close Navigator and in Las X click the Process tab. Select Mosaic Merge and in Projects select the raw tile scan image. In the Merge settings click Advanced and move the slider to one third for speed slash accuracy. Then select the channel that has the most information across the tiles. Clicking Apply will run the merge. This can take a considerable time and is best performed offline on an analysis workstation. Here the merge has been speeded up. Back in Open Projects you can see the improvement in tile positioning. Navigator can also be used to capture multiple single positions rather than tiles. Go back into Navigator and use the plus icon to mark single image points. Swap to the arrow icon to drag the stage around. For these I'll activate the Z-Stack settings. I'll keep the Z-Stack size the same as last time and simply recenter around the current focal plane. This works well when you know the thickness of your sample and it remains fairly constant. I've kept the same Z-Stack for all, but it is possible to set each one individually. The task list still contains a tile region. You can either delete it or deselect it. Clicking Start will now perform Z stacks in the two points that I've placed. The Images list on the right is a list of all preview images that Navigator has taken. These can be saved if desired, for example for an overview of the whole section. They can be hidden by deselecting or they can be deleted. Saving one places it in the current lift project. All images taken in Navigator can be viewed back in Las X. Settings used in any captured image can also be reapplied to the hardware to be reused either in Navigator or LASX. Here I've ensured I use the Z-Stack settings and using Live on the camera found a new field. I've then edited the settings, here removing the red channel and then pressing the recenter button in the Z-Stack settings to set the current plane as a central plane before taking the stack. By default, in Open Projects, the project auto names the files and suffixes with incrementing numbers. The prefix can be changed in project settings if desired, so that images are auto named for the relevant section being imaged. It is recommended instead to create a new project lift file for each section or cover slip and name this instead. The single image button will capture the current channel in the current focal plane. Capture image will snap all channels at the current focal plane, ignoring any Z settings. As you can see, the Z settings are still on, even though the FRED2 image is a single plane. Images within a project can be moved to new projects by dragging them into a new project, or can be deleted by right-clicking them.
To save your files, right-click on a project name and then select Save As. Store your images in the relevant month folder in the D User Data folder, from where they will automatically be copied to the Biomching RDW storage the following morning. The progress bar at the bottom shows when the file has finished saving. The DMI-8 is also equipped with a colour camera for imaging histochemically stained samples. Combined with the tiling options, this is a powerful way of capturing large sections relatively quickly. To swap cameras, click the camera preferences and choose the DFC450C colour camera. You can still capture fluorescence images, but each channel is an RGB image, as shown by the lookup table. For simplicity, I'll keep with fluorescence for this sample. It is often beneficial to check the camera colour balance. Do this by finding an area of the slide with no sample, defocus slightly, and then in the colour controls click white balance, ensuring the light path is set back to camera. This is simplest to do by clicking live. As before, set the exposure times for each channel before capturing your images. If you're only taking a bright field, then you only require one channel for the RGB image. I'll reselect the monochrome camera and set up three channels as before. The camera has a 16 bit depth, which means the pixels have a possible range of 65,536 grey values. This can be difficult to visualise on the monitor, so using the range indicator lookup table helps see the dimmer signal, and you can adjust the range for each channel, either using the auto scale button or manually. Note that this doesn't affect the underlying raw data, only what is shown in the image window. The overlaid image can be separated into the individual channels as well as the overlay by double clicking on the image and each window fitted to the pane using the auto zoom button at the top. Once you have completed your imaging session and saved all your data, close last X with the X icon in the top right corner. If you wish to immediately analyze your data, Copy them across the network to your group's RDW storage space. Lastly, sign out of the computer to ensure PPMS stops recording your usage. If there is no one else booked on after you, shut down the PC instead. Now we'll go over the hardware shutdown. Once you have finished your imaging, tilt the condenser arm back and remove your sample from the stage. Take a piece of lens tissue and carefully wipe any oil from the lens surface and barrel. Take a second piece of lens tissue, moisten with ethanol before wiping away any oil residue from the lens. Lastly, take a final piece of lens tissue to wipe off any residual alcohol from the lens surface. Remove any oil from the stage and discard the lens tissue in the bin provided. Return the condenser arm to the upright position and you can then proceed to turn off the power, starting with the shutter and power buttons on the LED power supply, followed by the microscope power on the CTR box and finally the flash 4 power at the wall.
Replace the dust cover on the system. Log out and switch off the PC if not already done so.